Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the inaugural episode of the St. Laurent Experience where we talk about the five biggest news pieces in the world of pop culture, in my opinion, that has happened in the last week. But before we get really started on this year inaugural episode, thank you all that have subscribed in the past week since I've returned to YouTube. It, it truly means the world to me. I believe there's nine of you at the time of this recording that have hit that subscribe button. That's awesome. Makes me feel very good, and I'm happy to keep making these videos for you and continuing to improve the quality of the videos as well. Now, make sure you do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that like button as it helps us get the videos noticed by new people that can also hit that subscribe button. Now, let's dive in to the St. Laurent experience. The first news story up this week is that Harley Quinn has been renewed for season five over at HBO Max, or Max, whatever you want to call it. It has been renewed for season five that'll come out late next year, of course, after the upcoming Kite Man spinoff. And this is very exciting news because Harley Quinn season four ended on a huge cliffhanger, uh, you know, setting up kind of like the Birds of Prey or the Gotham City Sirens, whichever iteration you want to you want to bring in. But I think it's going to be Birds of Prey, but I'm very excited. I was really hoping that it would get renewed, but I wasn't sure if it would with all like the James Gunn uh, having everything be connected. But I'm glad this show is going to continue and at least get one more season because I truly love Harley Quinn. It's one of the best shows when it's on and truly is one of my favorite animated shows of all time. So I cannot wait to see where they take a fifth season, even if it's the last season. I'm glad we're going to get some uh, some conclusion to the show, some closure, so we're not just left on a giant freaking cliffhanger like so many shows do. Like, I know, I think Titans ended on a cliffhanger, Doom Patrol is probably going to end on a cliffhanger, so that sucks for fans of those shows, but I'm glad Harley Quinn is going to get at least some more time, another 10 episodes, to tell its story, and I wonder if we're going to get another uh, Valentine's Day special this upcoming year, because the one they did last year was truly fantastic and a great bridge between seasons. Now, speaking of streaming shows, our next series jumps on over to Peacock because Ted, that's right, the, the raunchy teddy bear from the creator of Family Guy is coming to Peacock with his own new series. Uh, you know, Ted 1 was incredible, a fantastic movie, made a ton of money, so they made Ted 2. I personally really like Ted 2, not quite as much as the first, but I would have loved to see more Ted stories, and now we're getting it. This is a prequel about Ted and John growing up as John becomes a teenager, and we see, you know, them slowly start to go from, like, innocent uh, barren kid to, you know, the foul mouth, uh, you know, ruffians that we see in the first Ted movie. So I'm very happy to see this show. I'm curious about it. I think it's going to be really good. Seth MacFarlane's other streaming show, The Orville, is fantastic. It's got three seasons. It's incredible. And I just can't wait to see more of Ted. Like, I love that character, and I'm glad we're going to get to see that expanded on. It's got a really good cast, some crossover from The Orville, some crossover from Family Guy and American Dad and shows of the like. But nonetheless, I cannot wait to see Ted. I... I'm still interested. I don't really like prequels all that much because you know where the story's going, but I, I, for this, it's not like, oh no, I wonder what happens. It's just, you get to see the debauchery that they get into in their teenage years, and I'm very excited to see that. It sounds right up my alley, and Peacock really crushes it when it comes to series like Bel Air's fantastic. I thought their Saved by the Bell reboot was actually really fun and inventive. I hear the Continentals solid, but, you know, a lot of people feel weird about Mel Gibson being in there, which is understandable. You know, Mel Gibson's a piece of human trash. Um, what else? There's a Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal was a ton of fun. Uh, based on a true story with Kaylee Cuoco was a ton of fun. Like, I really like every time I watch a Peacock show, I end up really enjoying it, so I'm very excited to check out Ted in January in the new year. Jumping back over to the HBO side of things, we got some Last of Us news. That's right, we have a potential casting for Abby, and if you've played the Last of Us Part 2 video game, you know Abby is a huge character in the universe of The Last of Us. She does some huge, crazy things, and it looks like we might have a casting. You know, there's been rumors about, like, Florence Pugh, which I'd be okay with, but it almost feels like it just doesn't feel right, but now Caitlin Deaver, who just started one of the best films of the year, No One Will Save You, I th or it's something like that, I can't quite remember what the title was, but it's a great film with a great performance by her, and she's great in everything she pops up in, she was great in Booksmart, that's the first place I saw her, apparently before that she was on that Tim Allen show, Last Man Standing, and she's just great whenever she pops up and stuff, now, 
I could see her as Abby, but I do think she needs to put on some muscle uh, to really capture the role. Because Abby's, you know, Abby's a, th Abby's a thick girl muscle-wise in the game. So I think Caitlyn Deaver's a little on, like, the scrawnier side. So I think if she bulks up kind of like Gal Gadot did for Wonder Woman, uh, I think we could have a really great casting on our hands here. And Caitlyn Deaver, you know, the more Caitlyn Deaver in the world the happier I am because she's a truly fantastic actress. And if she joins The Last of Us, it could be what makes Last of Us Season 2 better than the already phenomenal Season 1. And speaking of Pedro Pascal, we're going to get to him in our headliner story. But before we get to that, we're going to talk about Destin Daniel Cretton, the director of Shang-Chi, leaving the directorial chair for Avengers Kang Dynasty, Avengers 5. It's not that he's splitting up with Marvel. He's going to focus on Shang-Chi 2, the Ten Rings spinoff show, and uh, Wonder Man, which is shooting right now, which is very exciting. I'm very excited for that show. But I'm very curious about him leaving Kang Dynasty with all these rumors coming about that, you know, Kang possibly is just getting shelved. Like, they're not just going to recast him, which I think is what they should do. Like, he's already here. We're already in the thick of it. Just recast and keep going. But it looks like it, you know, every day it looks more and more like Kang's just getting shelved, Kang Dynasty is getting shelved, and we're gonna get, like, a Secret Wars Part 1 and Part 2. I'm cool with that, too. I just, I want Doctor Doom to feel special, you know? I don't want him to feel forced in there just for the sake of, you know, because they don't want to recast. It's the easiest recast in the world. They could just make it the, you know, High Centurion from Guardians 3 if they wanted. I saw someone say Denzel. That would be fucking awesome if they made Denzel King the Conqueror. Or, you know, if Jonathan Majors is proven innocent, which I don't know if that's going to happen because it just seems like a whole lot of convoluted mess over there. Uh, you know, he could continue playing Kang, but Loki Season 2, the end of it, kind of gave them an out if they want to leave Kang behind. And it looks like with all these people, you know, the writer also left Kang Dynasty, so it looks like they might be doing that. Or, you know, these Avengers films are getting pushed a couple of years so these guys can focus on other things while they kind of restructure and see where they're going with the whole multiversal war thing. But... Nonetheless, what do you think of the director leaving Kang Dynasty? Do you think this is just them pushing that film down farther so they can, you know, rewrite it, possibly rework some things? Or do you think the Kang storyline is just kaput and we're not going to see any more of it and the Avengers 5 and 6 are just going to be secret wars? What do you think about that down in the comments? Let me know. Speaking of MCU, speaking of the man, Pedro Pascal, we got our headliner story this week and that is that Pedro Pascal is heavily, heavily reported to be playing Reed Richards, a.k.a. Mr. Fantastic, in the upcoming Fantastic Four film. Now, this is awesome. I love this news. I never really even thought about Pedro Pascal playing him. I was always like, Penn Badgley should be playing him. And I still feel that way. I think Penn Badgley would still be the better choice. But I love Pedro Pascal. I loved him in The Last of Us. Loved him in Game of Thrones. I loved him when he showed up in Buffy the Vampire Slayer 20 years ago. I love him in The Mandalorian. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to his film uh, with the director of The Barbarian coming out. Like, I love me some Pedro Pascal. I loved him in The Kingsman uh, movies. Like, he's so damn good, but he's so damn busy. So, the it's basically like he's going to play Mr. Fantastic if he can. They're trying to work out the schedules because it's not just Fantastic Four. Like, they probably want him for 10 years or so. Because, you know, they're going to want him for Secret Wars. Probably a Fantastic Four trilogy, at least. At least there's four films right there. So... This is a big commitment, so schedule permitting, Pedro Pascal is going to be Mr. Fantastic, and I think that's just incredible. Like, they're aiming for a little bit older of a Fantastic forecast, from what I understand, so Pedro fits that role perfectly. I did see some people kind of sad that he's not going to be playing Batman, but I don't know. Like, I love Pedro Pascal, but he doesn't, he doesn't seem like Batman to me. Like, Bruce Wayne, I don't know. I know he's like a playboy, a suave guy, but even when he's doing that, I don't really find Bruce Wayne the most likable guy in the world, and Pedro Pascal is just the most likable guy in the world, but then again, Reed Richards isn't the most likable guy in the world all the time either, so it's going to be really interesting to see how this shakes out. The rumored cast now is Pedro as Reed, Vanessa Kirby as the Invisible Woman. That's the casting that really gets me excited because I'm a huge Vanessa Kirby fan. I have been forever. She's so damn good. Um... Uh, what's his name? Joseph Quinn, Eddie from Stranger Things as Human Torch. I like that casting. 
kind of wanted Mason Gooding because I fell in love with him in the Scream movies. I think he's incredible and deserves the world, but I'm totally okay with Joseph Quinn. I think he's great too. And then I don't want to fuck up this name, but Eben Moss Backrack, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, you know, from The Bear, from Andor, from No Hard Feelings, from tons of stuff lately. He could be playing the thing, and I really like that casting because that dude's incredible as well. But what did you think of this inaugural episode of the St. Rent Experience? What did you think of all the news stories we covered this week? And did... Or do any of these get you excited? Do any of these make you worried? Does this episode make you excited to subscribe to the channel as you should totally hit that subscribe button and the like button? As I said at the beginning, it makes this video go out to new people so they can hit the subscribe button as well and we can continue towards 300 subscribers. Thank you all for watching this first ever episode of the St. Laurent Experience. New episodes will drop every Monday. I promise you that. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys right here next time.